Hi again. We're in Three Worlds, Plan of Redemption. Nelson Barber, Charles Days Russell, page 134. He's taking up the Antichrist. He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. That's 1 John 2, verse 22. The papacy has not denied the existence of the Father and Son, therefore papacy is not the Antichrist, is the reasoning of a class of Bible expositors whose name is Legion. But we shall show most conclusively that denying the Father and the Son can and does mean something quite different from denying their existence. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him, being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. That's Titus 1.16. Here we learn that men can deny God without denying his existence. In works they deny him. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. But if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith. Denying means acting contrary to. Denying ungodliness and worldly lusts is living a godly life. As the man of sin, he who has exalted himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, he who has applied torture, sword, flame, and captivity to all who have offended him, live contrary to and oppose the teaching of him who said, Love your enemies, resist not evil. If they smite you on the one cheek, turn to them the other also. If so, he has denied the Son. Has he taken vengeance into his own hands? Then he has denied him who said, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, says John. Even now there are many Antichrists. And Paul says, The mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth, hindereth, will hinder until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The civil power was what hindered. But in process of time, the church got control of the empire, and Rome became papal Rome. Then that wicked was revealed. That church has claimed, and to a certain extent exercised, all the prerogatives that Christ himself is to exercise in his kingdom. When the church element got the power, and the woman was seated on the beast, that beast was said to be in the bottomless pit. And this beast, having seven heads and ten horns, is the same as the dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, of Revelation 12. And this beast is to ascend out of the bottomless pit, that is, throw off the control of the church. This is he's referencing here Revelation 17 and 8, which we just made a video about. And go into perdition, just as the dragon or nations now controlled by the devil, who is the prince of this world, and to throw off or to be let loose from the control of Christ at the end of the thousand years. The dragon of Revelation 12 and the dragon of Revelation 20 are clearly one and the same. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. That's Revelation 12:9. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain on his, in his hand. And he laid hold of the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit. Revelation 21 and 2. As the dragon, the civil power of the nations, has been in the bottomless pit under the Antichrist, so the nations are to be subdued under the real Christ. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the kingdoms of this world become the kingdoms of our Lord. And it will be noticed that what is said of the real Christ has in every particular been counterfeited by the Antichrist. Be wise now therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth, serve the Lord with fear, and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the Son, lest he be angry, and ye perish from the way, when his wrath is kindled but a little. And has not Antichrist demanded the same homage of the kings of the earth? He also demanded kisses, at least they perish from the way when his wrath was kindled but a little. As Christ is to be King of kings and Lord of lords, so have the popes professed to be. And on his head were many crowns. Revelation 19.12 So too the popes were the many crowned, wear the many crowned hat. And as the saints are to be kings and priests and reign on the earth, 
the Romish church has claimed that dignity for her priesthood. So perfect is the counterfeit that many have mistaken the false for the true and really suppose the thousand years reign of Christ and the saints is in the past. But though the reign of Antichrist is over, that of the real Christ is not yet. For when the kingdom is the Lord's and he is the governor among the nations, all the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord and all the kindreds of the nations shall come and worship before him. Well, what's not being said here, of course, is that Barbara and Russell are getting most of this interpretation of the papacy as the Antichrist. As they're getting it from the Protestant churches. And as he points out at the very beginning, this has already been repudiated by recent, even Protestant expositors. So I'm among those who agree with those expositors that, no, 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 we were mistaken if we believe that the papacy is the Antichrist. The Antichrist that's talked about in here referencing two Thessalonians, that Antichrist is not yet to come. Not yet here. So that final Antichrist is one thing, but the the application of all of this from Revelation 7, the woman, the beast, etc., is all mis misguided. We've just done a video on it, which I will link, along with our video on J.W. Gnosticism, the Gnostic heresy of uh, an elite anointed, a non-physical resurrection, and a new light gospel. All of these marks of the Antichrist in 1 John chapter 2 are not even in this discussion of the papacy as Antichrist because according to the, the light of 1 John 2, the papacy hardly qualifies. It, actually, the JW governing body is a, a far better fit for this description in First John 2 of what the character of the Antichrist is. So I'll put the link into that specific video. It's a fairly long and detailed one, looking at the whole chapter of First John. Well, not the whole chapter, but a, a, a large chunk of First John 2. And also our video about Revelation 17. What is Babylon the Great?